let me jump to the next story. I'm going to chime in with one story of good news for just a second because I found this really interesting. There is an Iowa school district. I swear, there's so many stories that happened in Iowa uh, the past month. But basically, there's a school district called the Waverly Shell Rock Community Schools. It's a uh, it's a school district in Iowa. And they have two buildings that are no longer in use. They used to be like elementary schools or what have you. And they're not being used for different reasons. So the district is trying to sell off that property. They're trying to sell the buildings to whoever wants to buy it and wants to do something with it. So logistically, what that means is they will take bids from interested parties, and then they can decide if any of those parties are worthwhile. And the district made it clear, we are not obligated to accept any proposal. We do not have to sell to the highest bidder, but they opened the door to applicants, right? So they got a couple of proposals for like an arts center for like $5,000 and another $5,000 bid to build apartments where the money would be used to just change up the school. I don't know how the money works because that seems like a low offer, but whatever, it doesn't matter. But the interesting thing is one, the third proposal came from a Christian ministry. And I will show you what their proposal here looked like. Uh, Inspired Life Waterloo Christian School proposed to create Waverly Christian School and Preschool Center. Inspired Life, a local nonprofit in partnership with Waterloo Christian School, submitted two separate bids, one for one of the building, and then the other one is a backup plan if the first option didn't pan out. And that's fine. They can totally do that. Um, but basically, they say, we're offering $70,000 uh, for the first building that we want, or the second one if we can't have the first, um, and the intended use of the property will be for the founding of an accredited private K-8 school called Waverly Christian School, which is planned to be supported through a, through a partnership with Waterloo Christian School. The school is expected to have 100 students the first year with a capacity for 200. The proposal also envisions an accredited preschool center of approximately 30 kids. Okay, fine, whatever. So it's a $70,000 bill, uh, bid to say, we'll buy that school, we'll take it off your shoulders, and we want to use it to build our own private Christian school. It's the biggest bid that was on the table for the district. But then the next time I saw this story was a little over a week ago. Um, it was from Inspired Life, the ministry that oversees that proposal. This is what they posted on Facebook. Inspired Life, I'll make this a little bigger here so you can see it. Inspired Life is disappointed that our offer to purchase property for the purpose of launching Waverly Christian School was voted down in a 5 nothing decision by the, by the Waverly Shell Rock Community School Board. This decision was made despite Inspired Life submitting the highest financial offer on either of the available properties. We believe that communities benefit from having access to educational options that align with family values preventing the sale of a vacant school building and limiting access to educational options is not in the best interest of Waverly families. Our research demonstrates considerable demand for Waverly Christian School, and we will continue our pursuit of serving students and families by expanding educational opportunity. Yeah, yeah, no one cares. Okay, they're very mad that their bid was rejected. And so the obvious question that I had is, why did the school say no? to the Christian bid because it was. I don't know if it's the amount of money they were looking for, but yes, that was the highest bid on the table by a lot. So on what grounds did they say no? And I didn't know the answer immediately, um, but also I kind of get why the ministry was mad. We offer the most money. We deserve to get the building. Why did they unanimously say no to us? And by the way, this is such a small district that they don't have to legally post recordings of their school board meetings online like a lot of school districts do. So like I couldn't figure out, I couldn't find any record of what they said. But then there was a local news article that actually pointed to the answer uh, later in the week. And that's what I wanted to show you. Um, before I show you that though, I gotta show you one other thing here. And that is this, because in Iowa earlier this year, they actually launched these. Uh, Students First Education Savings Account. Basically, earlier this year, the Republicans in Iowa passed a law giving taxpayer dollars to families 
that enroll their kids in private schools. And according to what I found, nearly 19,000 kids were signed up to get these vouchers this year at a cost of up to $7,600 per student. The state was using $7,600 in taxpayer money per kid, up to that amount, for 19,000 kids to do private school and largely religious private schools. And again, if you know anything about school vouchers or the privatization problem, critics of these vouchers have said the private religious schools accepting these dollars, they may be unregulated, they lack accountability, they don't necessarily accommodate students with special needs. And of course, they are siphoning away money that could be used to maintain and improve public schools. That's why Democrats don't like vouchers. That's why liberal church state separation groups don't like vouchers, because it's really just taxpayer funded religion at that point. So that's what you need to know before I show you why the district said no to the Waverly schools. This is from a local newspaper called The Courier. And here's what they said. Um, almost immediately after reading the motion to consider the bids for the private school, uh, for the private school, the Christian school, board member Jen Kettleson motioned to reject it. Newly elected board member Sean Ellerbroke seconded. Every school dollar now with the new education savings accounts, the new vouchers, goes away from the public school. And we are a public school, Kettleson said. But we need to protect the school that we're a part of. All five board members agreed. They want the public school's to be supported and strong, he said. Any money that we start offering to other programs limits the dollars we have so that we can have a strong school. To put that another way, they said no, because why should they help a private school? It's irrelevant that it's a Christian school. They had nothing to do with this. They're saying, why are we helping a private school launch by selling them property that we do not have to sell to them so that they can take money away from our kids and other public school kids like ours. Oh my God, it's a school board that's actually putting students first. It's amazing. You love to see it. They actually care about students and they don't want private schools siphoning off money that Republicans want going to private religious schools instead. It makes so much sense for a public school district to put public school students first. So yeah, that's why they rejected a lot of money that it's not like they had a second option worth that much, but they said, no, we're not helping you destroy our schools. That's a wonderful thing for them to do. And I want to be clear what they did by rejecting that offer. That is not anti-Christian. They just said no to a private school, regardless of what brand of private school it was. You know, the short-term cash they get from saying yes to that bid, it would not be worth the long-term damage to public education. I did reach out to two of those board members, by the way, the ones I just quoted, just to get more explanation. They did not respond to me, but I wish they would make a more formal statement explaining what you just saw in that article. Because I think more school boards need to see that, that there are ways for school boards to stand up against right-wingers, against private school voucher people, against homeschool parents who want to take money away from uh, public schools to use for themselves. So that's the right move. I, I haven't seen this yet, but I am worried that some conservatives will treat this as a story of Christian persecution. And it's not. It's a story of what are the best things to do to support public education and selling off a building for some money to a private school isn't the way to do it. So I appreciate that and good on this board in Iowa for doing the right thing.